Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles AFC Daily with me, Harry Simiou. Uh, on today's edition, we're going to be talking about uh, some slightly different topics. There's only so much you can talk about Stan Kroenke. There's only so much you can talk about nonsense transfer rumours. So today, we're going to be talking a little bit about Freddie Lundberg uh, because I've written a piece for Vavil today on uh, what Freddie Lundberg will bring to the table. So it's got me thinking and I'm going to share um, you know my thoughts with you on that subject. We'll also be talking about the racial abuse suffered by Jordi Osai Tutu out in Germany playing for Bochum. We're going to be talking about Arsenal's uh, transfer negotiations so far. A report from uh, Leith Youssef at Football London uh, from a source very close to the club uh, talking about how Arsenal have gone about their dealings. That's one that's very interesting and you're going to want to hear about. Uh, and I'll be giving you updates on the Chronicles AFC fan phone-in and various other bits and pieces that we have lined up for the new season. Now let's start with Freddie Lundberg. Of course, signed for Arsenal back in September of 1998 from Swedish club Halmstad and went on to become a cult hero in the famous red and white strip. Now, Lundberg scored countless important goals and his decision to dye his hair red set a trend followed by young Arsenal fans, including me, up and down the country. An invincible and a true fan's favourite, Lundberg was handed the responsibility of leading the club's talented under-23s following a spell in Germany with VfL Wolfsburg where he assisted Andres Jonka. For years, the Gunners faithful have called for some of the club's greatest players to return behind the scenes with the hope that their guidance and, of course, winning mentality would inspire another golden age. However, that wasn't to be, and the likes of Patrick Vieira, Tony Adams, Dennis Bergkamp, etc., have taken up coaching roles at other clubs since, prompting some fans to blame Arsene Wenger for making it difficult for them to return. And that's kind of the phrase that was being banded about. But fast forward to July 2019 and it seems the club's stance on recruiting ex-players has very much changed following the news that Lundberg has been promoted to the first team and his former teammate Edu has been installed as the club's first ever technical director as we spoke about yesterday. Now Lundberg's under-23s finished runners-up in last season's Premier League 2 and having covered them live on multiple occasions last season... One thing that was abundantly evident was the strong bond Freddie and his players shared. There's been a strong working relationship between the young players and their mentor ever since he took the reins back in 2018, built on a foundation of respect for Freddie's illustrious playing career. So the question is, what does Freddie offer to the first team setup? With the Arsenal yet to splash out in the summer's transfer market, it seems the club will turn to its youth ranks in order to provide cover for the first team. Earlier in the week, it was reported Reese Nelson, Eddie Nketiah, Emil Smith-Rowe and Joe Willock would be promoted to the first team squad for this upcoming season. And who better to manage that transition than their metal, uh, mentor, sorry, Freddie Lundberg? Lundberg would be the perfect go between the young players and the manager. His detailed knowledge of their strengths, weaknesses and characters should provide them with the backing to succeed as well as assist Unai Emery in identifying how best to use them. Many tip Freddie Lundberg to be a future Arsenal manager and his promotion to the first team will accelerate his own personal development as much as that of the young players mentioned. Now in an age where young footballers are in the spotlight and sponsorships are more prominent than ever, Freddie's own experiences should prove valuable when it comes to keeping them grounded and focused solely on their football. Ljungberg's modelling career took off during his playing days, yet his exemplary attitude and professionalism ensured his performances on the pitch were never affected. Lundberg, in my opinion, is a fantastic addition to the first team coaching staff, whose presence will be felt not only by those youngsters, but the seasoned pros too. And fingers crossed, he can have a positive impact and uh, help Arsenal uh, achieve all their targets for the 2019-2020 season. Let me know your thoughts on Freddie Lundberg. Are you happy to see him in and around the first team for the upcoming season? Let us know in the comments section below. We've been having some... Fantastic interaction lately for which we are really, really grateful. So uh, continue. Let us know what you think down below. In other news, Arsenal loanee Jordi Osai Tutu was the subject of racial abuse during his first match in Germany with VFL Bochum. Uh, the game took place at St. Gallen and Osai Tutu was visibly upset by it. Uh, he was, you know, crying, it looked like, almost um, 
disappointment from what he'd experienced and you know it's not on it's 2019 we shouldn't be uh, still talking about this type of thing but unfortunately it's an issue with society and and unfortunately we can't do much to educate the ignorant because they're ignorant and and that's as simple as that really but what we can do is make sure that it doesn't happen in our game and it's really really disappointing to still hear of incidents like this and fingers crossed the German authorities uh, take the relevant action now you know we've seen examples of other countries and I use Serie A in Italy as an example where racial abuse isn't punished uh, as severely as it should be but I don't think that's the case in Germany I think the Germans will um, you know make sure that they deal with this and, and will do all the right things you'd hope anyway um, but I have faith in, in the German authorities that they will deal with this but it's sad that a player who's gone out there to gain some experience he's just 20 years old um, you know is having to deal with this on top of the difficulties of adapting to a new country and a new club etc etc uh, VFL Bochum did of course uh, put out a uh, social media uh, post afterwards and they said uh, we vehemently condemn all forms of racism Geordie, we stand behind you. The incident in yesterday's game against FC St. Gallen will be further processed with all participants. The club reserves the right to take further steps. So uh, it seems like uh, they're going to deal with it, but it doesn't make it OK, does it? It doesn't. And Jordi Osai Tutu put a, a post of his own uh, with the Enough uh, banner saying, make a stand against racism. Um, he put hashtag Enough. We are making a stand against racist abuse. We recognize that our platforms come with responsibility. And so we are using our voice to stand against racist abuse. Together, we are calling on social media platforms and footballing bodies to do more. Um, back in April, Osai Tutu participated in the PFA's Enough campaign. Um and uh, fingers crossed, you know, this gets the coverage it needs. And, and when I say it gets the coverage, I mean that it's brought to the attention of the right people so that something can be done about it. Because how long is this going to go on for? How long are we going to be talking about uh, racial abuse for? This is 2019. This shit should have been eradicated a long, long time ago. But every time we think that, you know, maybe it's getting a little bit better, then a load of incidents pop up and it makes you question whether it ever went away in the first place. Um, but not nice to see, not nice to hear. And until, you know, UEFA and FIFA and all the governing bodies get together and come up with a stronger punishment, a harsher punishment, I think we're still going to see these cases, as sad as it is to say. Now to turn our attention to a very interesting report coming from Football dot london in particular uh, laith yusuf a fantastic journalist works over there had the pleasure of uh, meeting him down at the kit launch uh, last week he's spoken about um arsenal's uh, transfer approach and he says that a well-placed source inside the football club has told football london that the approach to identifying and landing transfer targets during the summer window has been and i quote scattergun and lacking in direction what does that tell you? Uh, not really much that we didn't know, if I'm honest. I think we all uh, acknowledge that Arsenal's uh, you know, transfer process is, is lacking and there's real problems in terms of trying to get deals over the line and, and getting clubs to play ball with us in transfer negotiations. But hopefully, well, you'd hope anyway, that the appointment of Edu will address that. You'd hope that that's something that you know was an issue because of our lack of a technical director and Raul has been very clear about it that... You know, we were missing a really, really important piece of the jigsaw in terms of our structure behind the scenes. So with Edu coming in, you hope uh, that, of course, that is something that will be resolved and Arsenal will be a lot more uh, decisive, a lot more efficient in the transfer market now. Fingers crossed. Uh, but let me know what you think about that. Are you surprised to hear that? That even despite, you know, the, the new regime, etc., etc., that even still up to now this summer, Arsenal's... Uh, approach to identifying and landing transfer targets has been and i quote once again scattergun and lacking in direction let me know what you think about that in the comments section below just finally a couple of updates for you guys i've had a few messages uh, asking me when the fans phone in is going to return it will be back next week uh, we took a few weeks out because we're trying to improve the system by which we work the phone in um at the moment, we ask you to DM us with your number and we dial you from our central line here. Um, 
to get you on the line but we're looking to implement a way in which there's a set number that you guys can call so you don't need to go through the process of dming us your number um in advance we can literally or you know in advance or during the show the way we're looking to do it is to have a number for you just to dial and get straight on air so uh we'll provide you with some updates on that but the fans phone in will be back next week regardless so next thursday night we'll be coming at you with another fans phone in your opportunity to say what you want to say on the arsenal um that's pretty much it i'd say uh, don't forget peace coming out later on freddie lundberg i pretty much shared uh, most of it with you earlier on on this podcast but uh, if you want to have a read too if you want to share it with your friends it will be available on vavel.com a little bit later on i'll be sharing the links uh, via my social media pages um many of you will know that i've uh, the owner of the Sofa Sports Media Network, um, something that's been burning in the background throughout this summer, but we've got some big news on that uh, coming in the next uh, few hours, I'd say. By this evening, we're going to announce it and, and let you guys know what that means and uh, how you can get involved uh, with the Sofa Sports Media Network too. So uh, until then, take care, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another Chronicles AFC Daily. Ciao.